thing. It's the way to go. Eat a fig, not a pig. Let your kindness show. If it's your wig or a jig or a swig, do you dig it big? It's the way to go. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. When something's fat, there is a lot to show. It's gotta be fat to help the movement grow. Making fat loud chat that won't be flat. It's fat. And here's our show. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. That vegan glow Like a drag queen Colleen Patrick Goudreau I'm a YouTube beacon Cooking up good eating <sighs> Veganism makes me glow It's Big Fat Vegan Radio Alright vegans All together now When something's fat that There's a lot to show like It's gotta be fat, fat To help the country to grow Make it fat Loud chat That won't be flat It's fat It's the way to go It's Big Fat Vegan, vegan Radio, radio. Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Vegan Radio. We're podcasting from San Francisco. And other places too. <laughs> like New York City. <laughs> to discuss veganism and all of its glory. I'm here with Harvey, F- Harvey Firestein, otherwise known as Ben Strzok. <laughs> 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 also known as Honey LeBron, everyone's favorite vegan drag queen. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> and I'm here with Laura Yaz, vegan writer and entertainment jackass. <laughs> you can check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube by searching for Big Fat Vegan Radio. Oh, I needed that. And you can follow along with our show notes at BigFatVeganRadio.com. Hi, Harvey. Hi, Winona. <laughs> I don't know. I want to say some celebrity name. Um, name I have my voice, Winona. so. But everyone, Ben still yeah. doesn't have his voice. And yet, and yet. Arguably the only thing you require to make a podcast. Arguable. That is arguable. Because <laughs> if that was and all And an internet needed, connection. I think your that, voice and an internet was, connection, connection. If that was all we needed, we would not need money. So, oh, that's true. I wish. I wish I could just lay in bed and talk into the air, and a podcast would just happen. I don't. Unfortunately, we need wires and I think I'd do a lot of regrettable podcasting if that was the case. Oh, my God. You know, I've thought about making a separate spin off podcast just of me walking home from the gym. It's a 25 minute walk, and the thoughts that go through my head and the things that I feel like talking about to the air, I've just wondered if I just recorded. Into my phone, my stream of consciousness, as I'm walking home from the gym, am I big enough yet that anyone out there would want to listen to it? Um, I just the answer is no. let the listeners the answer know is that no. um, <laughs> I can hear it, so I'm assuming you might be able to hear it. <laughs> can hear a little, little kid's show in the other room? Well, oh, I yeah? live with children. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. It's a very great song. I, I I don't hear. It. I'm gonna turn up my my headphones. I'm more. loving it. I don't I don't hear it. All right. Well, I don't. Know. Sometimes you can hear stuff from. Sometimes you can't. So yeah. Anyway, if you can, y'all, I'm sorry about it. If you can't, whatever. you know what? You know what that sound is? That's the sound of life, people. That's it the sure sound is. of life. It's the and sound that's what of veganism life. is about. That is the next generation. That mm-hmm. is a generation mm-hmm. of vegetarian kids. Truth. Growing Preach. up in the next room, and right um, now they need to get they Hannah Montana on. Shoo. They don't. I would not permit no. Hannah Montana. Some, something. They got to get something. They got to get their swerve on. <laughs> you mean their twerk? Their twerk. They got to get their yeah. toddler twerk on. Toddler twerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ben, what'd you have for lunch? For lunch? Uh, wow, well, we're changing it up. Did I have? Oh, oh. Um, like well, you were prepared to answer the other question. Today's, a, first off, we're recording on a Saturday. So right now I would normally just be getting on the floor at Lucky Cheng's, but I did not work today because I was an actor, not, a, not, a, not Honey in the Bronx. Oh, excuse me. I'm burping Zevia. I, I, um, I was an actor. My agent called me not with an audition, with a booking. He's like, I have a booking for you next Saturday. This is one of those that just falls in your lap or like. They just saw my picture and they're like, that we'll guy. So how good do I feel right now? Yeah, um, that's so it's for some like medical, like industrial thing. Like they're filming like a day in the life of 
these like radiology CAT scan technicians. So I was a CAT scan technician and, um, and they ordered lunch for us on set. And it was like from like some place on the Upper East Side, like Jimmy Ray's barbecue. And it was like murdered animal with barbecue sauce or animal skeleton with some meat still hanging off the bones, barbecue sauce or coleslaw and flesh sandwich. And I was just like, yeah, there's nothing really vegan on here. And um, when they changed it up, they decided to order from this gyro place. I don't like saying gyro, but if I say euro, I feel like no one's going to know what I'm saying. So gyro place. They only say gyro in New York City. Everyone else says euro. I call it a euro because everyone, I think that's what it's Everyone called. else says euro. It's a New York City thing to call it a gyro. But now that a euro is like a currency, I feel like you can't say euro anymore. I'm um, telling you, if you get that sandwich any place other than New York City, people say euro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They only say gyro in New York City, and it's like in, it's like it's some kind of it's like some Brooklyn guy got into such a big fight about it that everyone's like, we're just calling them gyros. But I mean, it's G Y R O. Like, why wouldn't you just call it a gyro? Because that's not how it's pronounced. Does anyone remember the Nintendo video game Gyro Might? Everyone just Ben's post a little Facebook wall. Distracty today. Post center Facebook wall. Do you understand, Laura? This He's game. He's a little. He's a little shiny object. Gyromite came with a robot that you had to control to pick up these like spinning, like gyro, like spinning tops. I'm just gonna point out to that somewhere them. in this, Ben yeah. was telling us what he had for lunch. And it had to set them on these controllers. <laughs> Google Gyromite and you'll be like, how did they have this back in the 80s? Like, I'm doing how it right did they now. have this? Gyromite. <clears throat> Gyromite. It was the weirdest thing. And now it would be such a collector's item. Ooh. Probably worth $1,000. Oh my God, yeah, I love this. Right? Look at a video of Gyromite and be like, what the hell? But we never used the robot to play the game. I would just have my friend next to me control the controller himself. Yeah. Which made it a non challenging video game. Anyway. So I ordered a gyro with grilled veggies and barbecue sauce and french fries. No, not on the side, on the gyro. That was how they make it. So it was like So you said a no veggies. meat gyro then? Yeah, that was a, as ordered. It was just a grilled veggie and french fry gyro. Oh, that sounds great. Boom. Sounds really great sauce. actually. And I had some kind of like um what do they call it? It was it was a Greek thing. So some kind of like tzatziki? No, like some kind of like gigante pilanti blah blah blah. It was like some like great white beans in a tomato dill kind of whatever. That sounds it fabulous. It was hella good. Hella hella good. That sounds great. Yeah. This game looks I'm awesome. I'm trying to google it. Gyromite? No, the the beans. Gyromite looks awesome. Yeah, Gyromite it's making me wish I still had an old Nintendo. Well, you would need Gyromite and the robot that came with it as yeah, well. You need the robot. The robot is so, awesome. P.S. Before feigning interest in what you had for lunch, mm-hmm. I have to continue. Since I'm talking about being this big actor and having an agent that offers me gigs, I recently my agent called me with an audition. He's like, "Hey, I haven't now." Other people out there, as soon as I say the name, they'll be like, oh my God, I know what that is. Keep in mind, I don't know what this is. To me, it sounds like Macy's or Gimbal's or Zales. My agent's like, I have an audition for you. Gimbal's isn't real. Gimbal's is just in that movie. Gimbal's was real. Gimbal's is (laughs) No, my grandma had a Gimbal's card. My grandma used to go to Gimbal's. Was Gimbal's real? Wasn't Gimbal's, Gimbal's just was in, in Gimbal's the movie? Was a wasn't a real store. I'm Googling Gimbal's now. Gimbal's is the uh, fake folks, Macy's in the Miracle on 34th Street store. Listen. Gimbal's. Movie. Wikipedia. The Gimbal Brothers. Gimbal's was an American department store. American. From 1887 until 1987. Oh, all right. Okay. Eat it. Eat it. Are you eating it? I don't see chewing. I'm eating it. I'm just trying to figure out what the name of the store is. Unless um, you're drinking it, you're not eating it. See? Okay. Okay, hold on. I know what you're thinking. There's some other... They have like a fake name. It's supposed to be Macy's. I think that was like McGimbal's. It's something. Kohl's. 
Coles is a real place. Based in Wisconsin, I believe. No, but the name, whatever they use in Miracle on 34th Street as the name of the store is not a real store. But it's well, supposed to be Google Macy's, but it's Miracle not Macy's. on 34th Street department store name. Hit enter. Boom. It was. Is it just Macy's? I thought it wasn't Macy's. I thought was they used it? a different name. I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it. All right. Well, we're really off the rails here, so I apologize, everyone. Coles. It was Coles. Yeah, it's Coles, right? But it's it's, but it's Macy's. It's not Coles. It's yeah. Macy's. They just didn't C-O-L-E-S. have the right to use the name Macy's. Coles. And then Santa sends them to Gimbel's in that store, okay. in that movie. I just remember my, my dad's Remember he mom. says, I saw those toys at Gimbel's. Go to Gimbel's. Yeah. I remember my mom, my dad's mom, um, Joan, Grandma Strothman, um, saying she went to Gimbel's. So, All right. Boom. Well, I didn't realize Gimbel's was real because the Macy's name was fake. So I assumed the Gimbel's name was also fake in that movie, which shows what I know. So speaking of my acting career, uh, my <laughs> agent called me. Uh, but not called me. He emailed me and said, hey, I have an audition for you for Zaxby's. Have you ever heard of Zaxby's? Oh, this story, yeah. You you texted me this, I, so I'll act as, like I don't know. And I haven't. What's Zaxby's? I, as soon as I mentioned it to my roommate, my roommate was like, oh, girl, Zaxby's down south. But I was like, sure, Zaxby's, whatever. Great, commercial audition. And in the back, I was in my studio all day shooting portraits. So as soon as I got home, I was like, I better look up Zaxby's because now it started creeping in my consciousness. Like, what am I doing commercials for exactly? P.S. Get used to this voice and soak it in, listeners, because this is the last time you're ever hearing me like this. As God is my witness, I will never be hungry. I mean, as God is my witness, I will not have laryngitis next time you hear me. There we go. I was going to go into Gone with the Wind. But Let us pray. I, as soon as I got home, I, I started becoming like, wait a minute. What, what product am I hawking? Like, what am I doing a commercial for and promoting with my name and likeness? So I get home. I type in Zaxby's girl. Valid concern. Fried chicken. It is a chicken joint down in the south. I know. And apparently, kind of like White Castle has their own like chicken rings. Zaxby's everything is like little French fry shaped chicken fingers. So it's like a chicken oh finger God. sandwich, uh, a chicken finger salad, chicken finger blah blah blah. Uh, and I emailed him back only about four hours after I responded saying yes, I'll do it. But keep in mind, my audition is set for. 11.20 a.m. the next morning, I'm emailing him back almost at 10 p.m. the night before, like, Sandy, look, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to pull up the email I wrote him, but I said, look, I'm so sorry. I I wanted to give you a quick answer when you asked me. I didn't get home till just now, and when I did, the first thing I did was look up what Zaxby's is. Yeah. I didn't realize it was a fast food chain. I can't be connected to this. I cannot do a commercial Good for, for you. fast food or animal agriculture or anything connected to animals being used for food or fashion. You know, I, 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 my name and likeness is so well is so out there for animal rights. I just can't do it. And yeah, I said, no, I know I that you're gonna. You. You're going to hate me for this, and I'm so sorry. You know, I, I don't think I said sorry because I won't apologize for that. No, of but, um, course not. Well, you didn't say wrote- I'm so sorry I committed to doing it when I hadn't checked. I'm yeah. so sorry about that. But, um, but he, um, he, and he didn't write back anything, which, which to me tells me he's not upset with me because he will be upset with me. He'd he's let, let me know. know when he's upset. But um, I think it's water under the bridge now, so I'm glad I did that. So what did you have for lunch? I can't believe you even today? remembered to ask. We got I knew so far I was away out on from a lunch. Limb. I didn't even know where we were going to land. I was new. I knew I was out on a limb. <laughs> I fell I off am, of it, uh, by the way. I went to the veggie grill and I had um, the bee wing salad, which is the buffalo wing salad. Ooh, oh, that's, yeah, was there like great. ranch or, or blue it is cheese great. on it? So it's got like a ton of tomatoes and um, avocado, and oh. uh, then they put buffalo wings on it, and then the whole thing is in their ranch dressing, which is delicious. Oh, my God. That sounds great. I posted on Instagram, everyone. You can look yeah. at my picture of the bee wing salad. I want to lick that picture. I also um, ate a chocolate chip cookie. Okay. As you yeah, do. Yeah. So, so I'm have been. i doing this. I'm part of this group on Facebook. And I've been doing last month and then this month I did doing a – they do a box swap, right? 
Like you just said Oh, right. Somebody. You were telling me about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. told you about it. Anyway, I'm soon doing it again this month. And the person I'm paired with told me that they don't like anything salty. So I feel really crippled by this. <laughs> That's a broad statement. Anything, it is a really nothing, broad statement. And also when you're You don't getting, like the ocean. But it's like when you're getting a box of like dry goods from a person, it's like, I, I don't know what to put in there much more than chips. Like, don't get me wrong. I put other stuff in there, but I usually They don't like put, potato chips? I usually put a bag of chips in some kind. Like I sent yeah. the last girl, I sent her those um, those bean and rice nacho chips that are like Doritos. Oh, they are awesome. So good. So good. I sent her a bag you of those. You need to send her a shaker of salt. I should send her a shaker of salt. No, and then so um, I'm, I'm trying to get creative with her box. I made her, I got um, a, a disposable camera that puts cats on every photo that you take. What? That's creative, right? What? That's funny. Yeah, and That's then I got funny. her some post-it notes that are dogs with little thought bubbles. Yeah. So I'm actually, and then I'm giving her a bag of dried beans. I mean, really, I'm trying to like, she doesn't want anything yeah. salty. I feel totally. Anyway, well, so I was going to give her the. That's creative. I was going to give her the veggie grilled chocolate chip cookie because it's very good. But I'm not sure how I thought I was going to have that in my home and not eat it. Oh, that was not meant for you? The cookie that I ate that you watched yeah. me eat? Yep. Yeah, nope. That was for the box. I didn't. Did I watch you eat this? But now it's in my stomach. Okay. I ate it not less than an hour ago. I, well, an hour ago we were still thinking we were we on were Skype. So I'm pretty recording. sure you saw me eat this cookie. Remember you said what's that noise? And I said I'm eating. Oh, I don't remember. I think I was probably looking at some web thing. I think you were. Whatever. I think you probably weren't actually asking me about the cookie. I think you were probably asking me about that ad that haunted you for like 40 minutes. Oh my god! You guys can't. <laughs> Some article that I want to reference later had some pop up. So there was like Katie Couric or some, some, com- it sounded like Laura because had he was the being news haunted. on. And he the, was being I'm like, haunted Laura, by this video ad. Turn the TV off. I, I thought I was and losing I didn't realize it. it was me. It was totally off the deep end. If you're like me, which I hope you're not, you probably have 40 to 79 web open browsers tabs. open at the same time. I tabs. think everyone they know what tabs are. And so when you Especially hear when you're one podcasting thing. podcasting or writing, I mean, anybody can relate to that. When you have yeah. a project going, you have like 18 tabs up. I mean, that's normal. And I'm sure there's a website for this that makes this makes life easier, but there needs to be a, oh, don't close this tab. I want to read that later. Yeah. You know, Save I'm sure that later. exists. I think it's called P.S. bookmarking. P.S. Shut up. P.S. <laughs> P.S. Go to YouTube. This is nothing to do with nothing. Go to YouTube. Type in Digitwirl. D-I-G-I-T-W-I-R-L. I I found her channel. First off, she's adorable. If you want to be a video YouTube channel personality, this is how you do it. It's this gorgeous woman who's a mom and a wife. And all she does with her life is figure out electronics, gadgets, websites, products, services that you can use to simplify your life. And I love her. I want to touch the hem of her garment. I want to ask her. She's got great hair. She's amazing. She's just, she's making my life easier. So I'm on on a Today Show. She's famous. Yeah, yeah. So I... Could not figure out with all these open browsers where the sound was coming from. And then my phone rang and I answered and I said, who this? And they said, the commercial is coming from inside the house. And I said, (laughs) oh, snap. And I realized it was from my um, George Takai article, which we'll talk about later. Or we'll talk about now. Guys, isn't it about, fun how none of that was connected? It was kind of It was connected to wow. our um, hisses and purrs. Yeah, it's all, all right. setting us up for hisses and purrs. You want to start hissing? Start purring? Girl, this is going to be a long episode. God, I hope not. I sound like our friend Joel. I don't sound like Harvey Firestein. I sound like our friend Joel. Well, Joel sounds like Harvey Firestein. Are you kidding me? Does Joel listen to the podcast? Goodness, no. No? Okay. He's far too big a meat eater, I think, to listen to the yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my dad hey. listens to the show now. Hey, Hi, Mr. Yasnitsky. Hi, Dad. Thanks for listening. We love you. Thanks for putting up with me. I wonder if your dad is a fan of mine. He probably thinks you're super annoying. 
Oh my god. I would think I'm super annoying. I listen to this podcast. No, he's so sweet. He called me and he was like, I'm listening to the show. Oh. And I was like, oh my god. My parents don't understand that I have a podcast. Didn't I, don't I, tell, I don't think I told you this, but we, I think I was in New York with some friends and my parents. And I was like, oh, uh, my parents don't listen to my podcast. And my mom goes, totally like, um, how I'm, I don't have the vocabulary right now. She was totally indignant. She goes, it's only because I don't know what a podcast is. Yes. Well, <laughs> they can listen to us on YouTube now. So people who are podcast. I did tell her they- that. I said YouTube and she said she seems more. I don't know. I don't know that my People mom has who are the time. Podcast naive She's a busy lady. Can go to YouTube. And if you just subscribe on YouTube, you'll be notified when our, our when our podcasts are posted there. And they're now all up on YouTube, every last one of them. You're welcome. It took me forever. Um and we'll get them up there. But so, um, yeah, yeah. That, that is totally great. What Which is, is a great? way to reach more people? Oh, also, yeah. Also, if you absolutely. love an episode, you can just post it on somebody's like Facebook page and stuff. Exactly. It's yeah. Totally so if you great. want to share an episode, post it on their Facebook page. Way wall. easier. And then, or if you're of times, mentioned if you share a link one, to a podcast yeah. and people are like, what? But if you just share a link to the video, then they just play yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, you know what? Let's get on to the news. I'm really let's, excited to yeah. talk about my purr. I'm really excited to just to get on with the show. Oh, ugh, I know that feeling. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you give me that feeling all the time. I know I do. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's it about is. time I gave it to you. It's about time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I'm really excited to talk about my purr. Did you hear about this? I did not. Okay. So Animal Place, which um, we actually you know, just what, you know what I did. You know what I did hear about, though? Huh. Your mic stand. That? Uh, yeah. I heard about your mic stand. Okay. Okay. Hands off the mic stand. Okay. I'm sitting on my hands. Okay. Um, so Animal Place, which actually was the um, sanctuary that was the recipient of our 10% donation from our last fundraiser, mm-hmm. uh, which is a really fantastic place here in Northern California. Uh, they have two sanctuaries. Anyway, uh, I d- check out animalplace.org to learn more about them. Anyway, they were part of what ended up being one of the single, one of the largest like single rescues that's ever happened. So... Basically, when hens are um, unable to lay eggs any longer for egg producing farms, they're gassed. They just ma- they mass oh. gas them. It's yeah, it's horrible. So this, uh, you know, a lot of times, I guess the they'll when hens are no longer able to lay eggs or whatever when they're when the farms are getting rid of them, they'll be approached by sanctuaries who attempt to rescue them to see how many they can rescue, right? Mm-hmm. And something about the timing of this and a private donor allowed Animal Place to rescue 3,000 hens. Girl. So like all the hens from this farm basically that were going to be gassed, they were like all saved. Wait, it's three, unprecedented. 3,000? 3, 3,000 hens. Wait, in the notes here, it looks like it says 1,200 well, rescued. Let me, do you want me to tell the story? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm doing it, aren't I? Exactly what my roommate accused me of. I'm doing it. You know what? Hey, no, 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 no. I'm gonna. Can I? Can I finish? Can I finish telling the story? Because I don't. I didn't read it. I know nothing about it. Because I haven't read the articles. It. I didn't even hear about it. So why don't I just go? In? So anyway, thank you, Laura, for that lovely intro. Anyway, so they they took. They got a bus, right? They got a school bus, and they and they pulled it up outside the mall, and they waited for all the chickens to come out. Oh God, I, I got nothing. Oh, hilarious! No, well, so the thing is, one of the things that's super um, high profile about this, it's been getting a lot of attention, is that because of this private donor who's pulling, this anonymous person who's footing the bill, basically. And I love you, whoever you are. You're amazing. It was Sunshine Villa. I'll just <laughs> it probably was. Um, anyway, so 1,200 hens were airlifted from – they were flown from California to the Northeast to go to various sanctuaries in the Northeast, which oh is incredible. So it's God. like, of course, it's all these great farm sanctuaries in the Northeast in New York, like Farm Sanctuary, Woodstock, um, Catskill Animal Sanctuary, you know, just – the list goes on and on. And it's inc- – they're all taking in like – they're they're it's it's amazing – so 
it's just like unprecedented. It's getting a lot of media attention and it's just a really wonderful uplifting story that helps people realize what happens to the egg laying hens because, you know, of course, always egg laying is still something that people are like, they don't really understand what's wrong with eating eggs. We take them before they're fertilized, yada, yada, yada. This is a great example. Well, these hens could live for years and instead they're gassed because, you know, they're done with them. So it's a great example. So share the story and also, you know, go on to give, go tell Animal Place how fabulous they are because this is a really incredible thing that happened. So anyway, wow. it's making me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. That's really, that's like first, and that's a first. I mean, this is, this is unheard of. I know. 1,200 hens flying first class. Wow. This it's an incredible story. Like- and there's, if you go to the Animal Place website, there's a lot of great coverage, a lot of YouTube videos you can watch about it. It's it's a really exciting rescue. It's an amazing rescue. This sounds like if the song The 12 Days of Christmas went on and on and on and on forever, eventually 1,200 <laughs> rescued hands oh, yeah. airlifted to the, the animal sanctuary. Catskill Animal in Sanctuary Northern California. and Woodstock Farm. And a partridge. Still in a factory farm, but we're working in a pear tree. In a pear tree, a pear tree is a happy place for a partridge. In a pear tree, in a pear tree, beautiful, beautiful. So, anyway, who, isn't that a great who, story? Who, who's making us purr? Animal place, you're making me purr. So may I hiss? Oh my may god, I hiss? please hiss. Okay, so there is a. Vegan company uh, that I found on the Facebook. It's called Hail Mary. Mary spelled as in Merry Christmas. Hail as in Hail Satan. Uh, Hail Mary. Created by moms for moms. And the kiddos love it too. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, grain-free, peanut-free, totally lesbian-friendly. Using like they they have all these like disclaimers like raw oils, vegan, blah blah blah. <clears throat> so they're a totally vegan company, right? And it's good stuff. I'm sure they're that's a really popular company. I'm sure you've seen their stuff in Whole Foods. They have like the little tarts all the time and macaroons. They're really popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so far, so good, right? Like so far, you're like, yeah. Why is this a hiss? Like, why oh yeah, is this they a sound hiss? okay. They sound great. Yeah. Well, they on their Facebook page for some reason posted this like food pyramid of like the top five like healthy fats and on this picture and in your head you're like cashews avocado coconut right, oil name them chia seeds you know whatever they've got a piece of salmon they got a chicken leg they got they some bacon 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 bacon, bacon um, everyone bacon well, I mean, yeah bacon Healthy I mean, they have like bacon next to olives and avocados. Like they mm. should put a donut in there. Healthy fat yeah. donut. <laughs> like you could have, you they have an egg cracked open. Yeah, salmonella. Who's gonna clean that up? Huh? I don't see a bottle of bleach next to it. Yeah, um, healthy fat. It's like the highest cholesterol you can possibly have. Yeah, and some people are kind of like posting like, "Ew, no, no pork." Like, why are you posting these? And they're even commenting on these, kind of defending them, saying, well, Lard's the making a comeback. It's a, a picture of lard, which contains 45% mono unsaturated fat. Here's an article about lard's comeback. Like, yeah. lard's making a comeback. Lard, the new health food? Yeah, so the company mark. is like defending animal product use usage. Yeah. This vegan company that makes I vegan treats. It. I don't get it. Like, it's disturbing. I don't, I don't understand why you want to even frame this like this might be, uh, you know, an option for people. It's just, let, let, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't with this. Hail Mary, I can't with you. Okay? I can't with your ass. It's disturbing. Hail Mary, your love of animal-based, quote-unquote, healthy fats, it's making me hiss. <laughs> <laughs> It's making me hiss too. And I want to say that I would really encourage people to go to Hail Mary's Facebook page and say, you know, what say something. What? I did. What the what? What the what? Yeah, what, what the, the what, what is what you can say. You can yeah. say, hey, vegan people, what is with this? Obviously, yeah. they're not vegan people. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why they'd want to do this. It's pretty Unless alarming. it's all some clever trick where they're like playing an early April Fool's on us. Or a really late April Fool's. Yeah. It's a little late. It's a little late. Well, I was like, maybe it's a Friday the 13th thing because it looked like it was posted on Friday the 13th. But the fact that they're commenting back and like defending what they said. Well, it was Friday the 13th yesterday. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. It's not. They're, they obviously think it's fine. And so obviously their vegan adage on their product is an, you know, and it's an allergen thing. They don't actually care. Yeah. There was a place, um, Phil, our friend Phil E from Philly, um, he was telling us about this place in Philly that was like this like cupcakes place. Yeah, they were on Cupcake Wars. Yeah, that was totally allergen free. But they weren't in it to win it vegans. So like But they, their cupcakes were vegan. They happened to be vegan, but then they, they started using some non vegan ingredients, but arguing that it was it that the allergens was their more important thing and not vegans. And there was a vegan backlash. You don't want a vegan backlash. You just don't. You just don't. Oh, which is going to lead us to my next purr. So I'm going to let you give us your next hiss. I will let you. Oh, I was so excited about your purr. I'm like, forget my hiss. Yeah. Um, (coughs) Yeah. So um, I'm just hissing about um, this. Well, it's a hiss, but this is also like a. Oh, I'm sad about this. All right. Well, it's a hiss, but also it's something you can do that can work out for you as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, You can do it too, Ben. So Naked Juice, which is owned by Pepsi, was sued in 2001, accused of using GMO ingredients and deceptively labeling their products all natural. So I'll just uh, read this little summary of the lawsuit. Okay. According to the plaintiffs, Naked Use, Naked Use, (laughs) sorry, Naked Juice used soy ingredients that are genetically engineered by design or by contamination. Naked Juice doesn't use certified organic or verified non-GMO soy. Naked Juice internationally used misleading language to give consumers the false impression that the beverage's vitamin content is due to the nutritious fruits and juices rather than adding than added synthetic compounds. And the PepsiCo subsidiary, subsidiary contained a laundry list of synthetic chemicals, including calcium panthothenate, synthetically produced from formaldehyde. So, as many of you, I'm just going to say this as a, as a, just a little um, little suffix or whatever. As many of you have heard me say time and time again, pasteurized juice is not good for you. So yep, obviously, yep. I'm on that bandwagon. Obviously, naked juice is pasteurized, so mm-hmm. that there's no way that you could be that you could be getting all the um, you know all the uh, nutrients from the juice. It's pasteurized juice, which most people it's don't just realize. Sugar. Which so, if you want it, that's fine, but you're basically drinking a soda at that point. Yeah, yeah. You're just, you know, I mean, look, occasionally I'll get like a pasteurized beverage if I want, you know, yeah. if I want to have something or whatever. That's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but, you know, naked juice is not something you should be drinking like uh, thinking that it's supplementing you basically. Yeah. And what they're arguing, what they won, they're not just arguing, <laughs> is that yeah. the the labels are misleading. And I completely agree with that. It's called naked juice. I mean, that's misleading. It's not naked. Well, they, I mean, you can you can title it whatever you want. But they, it's not naked. They supplement it. So I mean, it, it's it's but from the get go, it is totally misleading all over the place. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the point is, first of all, this is a big win. This is a great win. I know we're fighting this um, all across the board. I know that that's. Uh, that's this falls right in line with um, our friend over at the Regal Vegans lawsuit. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, false advertising. So it's great. It's a great win. And the thing is, this is a huge suit, and you, you listener, can get some money. You can file your claim at the at www.nakedjuiceclass.com, and there's a link to the claim form. You can fill it out, even without proof that you have ever bought naked juice. You can just what? Yep, that's correct. And I think the most they're giving each person is forty five dollars. So I'll anyway, take forty five dollars. Yeah, you're you're Girl, eligible I've, to receive up to forty five dollars directly I've from done Pepsi. I've drank a lot of, of naked juice. Yeah, well, that's interesting. This this 
article that we're going to link to in the show notes actually says, it's funny, he says, $45 isn't a lot of money, especially if you've probably spent far more than that on naked juice since 2007. Especially, so true. Especially if you're Pepsi, $45 is not any. But anyway, the point is we want as many people to fill out this form and claim as possible because we want Pepsi yep. to end up having to pay the full amount. It's important that they know that this matters to people and they need to pay through the nose. Yeah. So I, I know I've bought naked juice. Just if yeah. you've bought a naked juice between 2007 and 2011, which I'm sure most people listening to this probably did, fill That's out the really claim not the form. Point. And, and That's just, really not the point. The yeah. point is, the point is you want to become a member of Big Fat Vegan Radio, right? <laughs> but you can't because times are tough and we get that. Free money, people. Listen up. Free money. Yeah, this is free money. So All you, you have to do is fill out a form and you get some free out money. Of your pocket, you contact PepsiCo. Get them to give you 45 bucks. I don't care if you never had naked juice. I don't care if you don't understand English. I'm not going to vouch for that. Please only fill it out if you have had naked juice. <laughs> no. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's <laughs> bullshit. Fuck that. Fuck that. I think Dude, honesty listen, is the best policy, listen, everyone. Listen. Fuck that. Fuck honesty. Listen. Listen. Okay. So you're going to contact naked juice and you're going to say that you were weaned. Your mother did not breastfeed you. You were bottle fed naked juice from birth and that you were a flipper baby because of naked juice. And because of that, you want your money. You want $45 and damages. And then you're going to take that money and you're going to do a one-time membership, which is 50 bucks to Big Fat Vegan Radio. And that's going to get you a one year, one year. Ben, come back in from the ledge. Of secret shows. Secret shows for a year on Pepsi. You guys Boom! are going to get an epic secret show. The next Boom! secret show is going to be crazy. The next secret show is going to be a, an official apology. I think I think we have about an hour of material yeah. for the next secret show. Oh, oh girl. It was insane. Girl. You guys, today it's gonna was crazy. It's going to be a quilt. It's today gonna be was a crazy. Tapestry. I don't even know what happened today. It's going to be a tapestry. This is why you, you want the secret tapestry shows. Tapestry indeed. For the shenanigans that go down between me and Laura. Half of it we're going to have to edit because it and was just. And there's a guest. Yeah, and there's a special guest. Oh, it's not even just me and Ben. There's somebody else. A celebrity, else in that. a celebrity special guest. Anyway, so that's all I'm saying about the naked juice lawsuit, which I think is good news. But overall, um, Pepsi, you're making me hiss. Hiss indeed. All right, so everyone, please take a seat because the purr is so exciting. The purr is so exciting that it's I so literally exciting. have to pee. That's how exciting the purr is. You're serious, aren't you? You do need to go to the bathroom. This is not a figurative pee. I'll be right back. Mm, a five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, run along. Ugh. I'm playing Candy Crush. Time passes. And I'm back. Oh, I just got... Dang it. All right. What, what, what? I was going to play Candy Crush while you were in the bathroom, but you were too fast. I was going to guess. I was going to guess. I was going to... I didn't even know you were a Candy Crusher, but I was going to just be funny and say, what, did you get to level three on Candy Crush? Uh, 78, mother... Is that a level? Yeah, there's like 400 levels in Candy Crush. Am I your mother now, by the way? What was that? I was going to curse, but then I bit my tongue. Well, I like how I've trained us in the real world to not curse. Well, I should be trained anyway. Yeah? I mean, yeah, I'm all like a sailor, I'll be right? honest. When I'm at work, I usually am pretty good about saying things like, Jiminy Cricket! Dang <laughs> yeah. it! Yeah. Yeah. Although a little the, rascal. One of the girls right, now, so, if I say dang it, she goes, dang it! Yes. <sighs> Y'all, Laura and I, since the beginning of this podcast, since before the beginning of this podcast, have been waiting. Oh, waiting for this day. For this day, can you feel a brand new day? Can you feel a brand, brand new, day? new day? Everybody can look around. Y'all, Kristen Quinn has been defeated. So <gasps> if you dare to find me, look to the western sky. As someone told me lately, 
Everyone deserves a chance to fly, except Chris and Quinn. And if I'm flying solo, at least I'm flying free. We're saying My wicked name now. Is Bill de Blasio. I was telling the other I song. Hope you'll vote for me. Anyway, ooh, where did that come from? I don't know. It was quite the medley. <coughs> that wasn't a medley. It was one song straight through. But you know what I wish I did? It was. You know what I wish I did before Chris? Before all this happened, I kind of wish. I could turn back time because I have a really good parody that I wish I had written and recorded and made a video of the tune of this girl is on fire by Rihanna. I wish I had done Chris Quinn is a liar. Chris Quinn is a liar. Or Quinn's pants are on fire. Her pants are on fire. Cause From she's lying. such a liar. Yeah. But now I won't have an opportunity to do it again. Well, you could still do it, but people just aren't going to care because Because she's not going to be our mayor. So people are probably wondering why I'm doing this long victory dance in the end zone here. So, so, well, if you are new to the radio, you might not know that Christine Quinn was one of the candidates up for the Democratic slot to be our mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, for New York City's mayor. New York City 2013 mayor. And the reason why that's bad news, yay, she's gay, yay, she's she's a woman, yay, 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 yay. But she's not. that does not mean she's good for the gay community. It does not mean she's good for anything else. It doesn't mean purposes, she's good for women either. She single-handedly blocked bills that really helped women. Yeah, and, and first of all, like when you're talking about workers' rights, well, women are 51%, aren't they? So if, if right. it's workers' rights, it's women's right. rights. And, um, you know, you want to help women, help women who work at fast food jobs. I see plenty of them. Well, I mean, you um, can just look look it up. Gloria Steinem was personally, you know, um, yeah. w- withdrawing her yeah, uh, yeah. support for Quinn because of the way she was handling bills. Yeah. So, except for Bill de Blasio. Um, that may, makes no sense. But nope. um, so... Chris Quinn, the main reason for our purposes that why we got into this fight in the first place is because Christine Quinn blocked every meaningful animal protection bill that was introduced since she took over as the Speaker of the City Council, namely the movement to ban horse-drawn carriages. She yes. single-handedly stood in the way of getting those banned. Also, and, let me just say, let me yeah. just share... Because this was a NY class meme that was made, mm-hmm. but I, I think it was fantastic. It was the humane scorecard for all the nominees. Yes, I saw that. That was great. So it was, it's de Blasio, Lou, Quinn, Thompson, and Wiener. And it, the 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 um, four um, platforms or whatever that they uh, put on this meme is that uh, – Phasing out horse-drawn carriages, building animal shelters in the Bronx and Queens, requiring fire sprinklers in pet stores, and protecting tenants' rights to have pets. Literally every single person running supports all of these except Quinn who opposes all of them. All of them. So that just sort of sums up how bad she is for animals. Yeah. Yeah. In New York City. Yeah. And and honestly, you know, as Donnie Moss said it very well, he sent an email to all of the – um, Chris Quinn people basically thanking everyone for all of our hard work over the last few years. And he said it so well when he said, look, none of us were in this fight. We were in this fight because we thought it was worthy, not winnable. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I filmed new episodes of the cooking show last night. So I was at Donnie's apartment and it was my first chance to give him a huge hug and thank him for everything. Oh, and I'm like, Donnie, so amazing. Oh my God. Like, what is he going to do with all his free time He's been fighting that fight for a long time. Over four years. And for over four years, people (laughs) started high school and got out of high school in the time Donnie (laughs) Moss has been fighting Christine Quinn. And and I said to him, Donnie, I'm like, Donnie, I'll say it now. I was afraid to ever say it, but I really did not. I had no illusions that we were going to win this. And he's like, oh, my God, neither did I. But, you know, Anthony Weiner entering the race, that was like the first glimmer of hope that, oh, my God, maybe the pins are coming undone. Mm-hmm. But I want to read something here. Um, it says right here, there's an article by the uh, Washington Blade. 
I, I think there was an article in the New York Times as well, but I can't find that one because I want to be like, woo, we made the New York Times. But I'm just going to say, yay, we made the Washington Blade. But there's an article here that um, other political observers say Quinn's campaign was also hurt badly by an independent expenditure organization formed by labor and animal rights activists called Anybody But Quinn. Among other things, the group produced attack ads denouncing Quinn for not supporting legislation to ban horse-drawn carriages in New York's Central Park. So, y'all, we made the story. You know, when history was written, it was said, the people who made the difference. Here's the thing. Now, I never knew what a runoff was. A runoff means... During the Democratic primaries, where the Democratic Party is trying to figure out who's going to be our Democratic candidate for mayor when we go to the polls in, in November. Is it going to be Christine Quinn? Is it going to be animal-friendly Bill de Blasio? Is it going to be Thompson, Wiener? Who it going to be? Um, who that is? So if, so if one of those people does not get at least 40% of the votes in the primary, then they're going to take the top two and they're going to lip sync for their lives or something. <laughs> Could you imagine if they had it? That's how, in the, in the future, that's how it's going to be done. Oh, I, my God. I wish they were That's how it would be done. That'd be amazing. But so basically, it, um, Bill de Blasio, who is the guy that we want, because he's basically said, y'all, the day I take office, say goodbye to the horse drawn carriage. Yeah, he's like, it's gonna, gonna, like he's going to do it right away. Yeah. He's like, it's going down. It's so we're exciting. Gonna hold, we're going to have to hold him to that, too. The next step will be to make sure it happens. Yeah, but it's really exciting to hear him so boldly be like, oh, oh yeah. I'm doing it. No questions asked. Yeah. So um, he won the primary with 40.3% of the vote. By you guys, news. one third of a percentage. That means that Donnie Moss, me... Y'all, Ali Feldman of NY Class, all of us, everyone out there fighting this fight. And you know, I got to say it. I got to say Laura, I'm going to say it. Can I say it? Yeah. I'm going to say it. We have hissed about NY Class. We have talked some smack about NY Class. Y'all know we've had our differences with NY Class before. Well, they were Quinn supporters forever. Well, they were really in favor of pushing this electric car thing. And we were like, forget the electric car. We just got to go after Quinn. That's how we got to do this. And towards the end, finally, some stuff changed on their side. And finally, they were like, okay, we're now just going to go after Quinn. And remember how at the end of one of our episodes, we ended with a little letter that I sent. Okay, this is where history was made. I feel like this is where the tide turned. Because that letter I sent to yeah. Allie to congratulate her. Um, I'm like, hey. To thank I think her you guys for are doing, starting thank a campaign. You. You're, you know, I got to give credit where it's due. You're doing great work on this. And she wrote back really angry at me because I've been blasting her all this time. And I sent that to Donnie. Like, Donnie, what do I do about this? And he's like, hang on. If she really wants to work, because she later wrote back after that email and said, look, I'm sorry for that email. I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you. She's like, look, I'm sorry not. for that email. She apologized for, oh, P.S., unrelated to any of this, the moment we're done recording, this isn't even for a secret show. I got drama for you. This isn't even like listeners get to hear this. So they'll just always have to wonder what it is. There's a story I've been waiting to tell you for Almost three months. Don't let me forget the okay. minute we're done. All right. Okay. So, um, but anyway, um, aren't you wondering what that story is going to be now? And listeners, no, you I want you to, to finish it. talking you about Allie. So she wrote back and apologized for that little email that she sent to me and said, look, if you really are interested in helping us out, because I said, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. And she's like, if you're really interested in helping out, you can take down the article on the Blinders, the movie website. Because she kind of like thought me and Donnie were one entity, which I am honored that anyone would even group me together with Donnie God, Moss. right, that's so funny. Like, she thinks she's insulting you, and you're like, oh my God, yeah. she called me Donnie Moss. I'm like his <laughs> mini-me, apparently. I love Donnie Moss. But um, anyway... Um, so I forwarded it to Donnie, and Donnie's like, wait a minute. There might be an opportunity here. If she really wants to join, fine. Allie, whatever you want. 
You want me to take down that, that thing that says bad stuff about my class? Boom, it's gone. What else do you want? And he's basically like, how about my people join your people? And the next thing I knew, there was a new group just called Anybody But Quinn. Yeah. And they had the red t-shirts and they're being photographed anywhere. And bam, that was like the watershed moment where suddenly we had like front page visibility and everyone who was out there getting the word out, like it spread like wildfire. And I can't tell you, Laura. Well, you know, you that how... just speaks to because when we did our interview with Donnie, that was when yeah. NY Class was supporting Christine Quinn. It's why we wanted them on our side so badly because we knew it would help so much. And it did. Yeah. And it's so yeah. thrilling. Well, and I can't tell you how many people have written to me because I feel like I've been pestering everyone on Facebook. Like people must be so sick of me constantly blasting Christine Quinn. I know I've lost friends of it because I have pe- there's friends who support her just because she's a woman, just because she's gay. And I know I've not yeah. been popular for taking my anti Christine Quinn. You know, I have a lot of friends in the Broadway community who go to benefit concerts and fundraisers for her. I know people don't like me for my anti Quinn stance. But I have so many people who've messaged me thanking me for saying, hey, if it hadn't been for you, and I'm going to quote one friend, and your ceaseless vitriol against her. I had to look up the word vitriol. <laughs> um, I would not have known to look past her identity and look at her actual record. And I would have voted for her. Thanks wow. to you, I voted for, for de Blasio. And so thanks to all of us and all the noise that we made, And first and foremost, if we can pin this on one person, thanks to Donnie Donnie Moss. Moss. Donnie Moss. Moss. If it wasn't for Donnie Moss, I really don't think de Blasio would have I mean, his dedication. Yeah. I'm just going to say, without Donnie Moss... Bill de Blasio would not have gotten 40.3. Maybe he would have got 39.9. Who knows what would have happened, but he single-handedly made a huge difference. And this is one of those things where it says when people say that one person can't make a difference, they are wrong because this one person made all the difference. If you are, well, they're right. If you're one person, you cannot make a difference. What we're trying to say is you cannot make a difference if you're one person. Unless you're Donnie Moss. (laughs) Stop it. That's not what I'm saying. The point is, each of us has an inner Donnie Moss. So you, the That's person true. Channel listening. Your inner, channel yeah. your inner Donnie Moss. You, the person listening, you as an individual can never make a difference in this world. But what you need to do is channel your inner Donnie Moss. Ugh, I want to hug Donnie. I want to hug. And I did hug Donnie. And I picked well, him up Will you tell him that I love him so much? I don't even live Donnie, in the city anymore. I'm just so thrilled you, for everybody. We love you. We love you. Um, is there a podcast version, like an on-the-air version of like... Let's all, as a listenership, go down on Donnie in, in honor of Donnie. Well, we could all just Donnie, pour out a little bit of our green juice. Yeah, I'm gonna, Donnie, I'm pouring out some of my Zevia to you. And yeah, and we, the podcast, go down on Donnie Moss. There we go. Well, I don't, but he would okay. rather it not be me anyway. Well, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. So, Donnie, we're, half of us are going down on you in your honor. So, <laughs> Donnie, you are making us purr. More than per. Donnie, you're making us have also, an Also, I think we should take a moment, Ben. Let's yeah. take a moment um, for Christine Quinn. We should take a moment for her. A moment of silence for Christine Quinn. Wow, it just feels like... Just a respectful something... moment of silence. Wait, wait, wait. Can we have another moment of silence for Christine Quinn on behalf of the black people and the Latino people? Amen. Because you know that she and the was women. the one behind Stop and Frisk. So, you guys, for all, of the, for all the blacks and minorities and all those... Who were being that sounds so racist, right? Blacks and other minorities. Well, how we just say no. all the guys that used to all live on my block who, who used being, to get who pulled over for no reason by stopped and fr- by stop and frisk. Yeah, you, like they just your, standing on the street. Your cops never bothered silence, me. Your moment of silence for Christine Quinn. Here it is. Can't you feel a brand new day? I can feel it. Can you feel it? 
because I feel it. I feel Boom. fantastic right now. I feel it. Ah, oh. so not only Donnie Moss is not just making me making me purr, he's making me have an entire litter of kittens. Where did all these kittens come from? I don't know. I I I didn't you know, know you I was pregnant. You just reminded me of. Did you ever watch that TV show Scrubs? I thought you were going to say that TV show. I didn't know I was pregnant. No, did you ever watch that TV show Scrubs? Yes. Where they used to like dump the box of kittens on him, and he's like, "Oh my god, there's so many what? kittens!" What? <laughs> I want someone to dump a box of kittens on me. You just me. made me think of that. It's like, oh my god, all these kittens. <laughs> I want. One day in my life, someone to wake me up by dumping a box of kittens on me. I got to tell you, it's got to be worse than it sounds. Not to romanticize anything, but we all know there was a time in my life when I was a pot smoker. And girl, the best thing in the world is when someone wakes you up by shotgunning into your mouth a wake and bake. Yeah, I would kick somebody out of like, bed real fast what? for that, I got to tell you. Yeah. I would kick them right out. Yeah. But, that, but, but you wouldn't be able to because you'd just start eating everything in sight because you'd have the munchies. Yeah, I was not what a, a way stoner. To wake up. Look, if you are a stoner, do a wake and bake in my honor. I'm just going to say it. Or don't because uh, – Or don't. If you have a problem, reach out and get help. Um, we're here for you. Yeah, but we, if you are a stoner and you. you can handle it, do a wake and bake in, in Ben's honor because it's been five years. So, right, well, And I don't want one because I don't need it. But if you're – I'm not going to encourage anyone to – I'm not, I don't condone it. I remember it. Do drugs in the morning. I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. When you do drugs first thing in the morning, that's when that's you got to start. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying when I haven't done up, it. You're like, I'm saying I don't recommend it. Tumble out of bed and stumble to the kitchen, pour myself a cup of ambition, and yawn and stretch and wake and bake. That's a problem. That's a yeah, song Dolly Parton did not concerning. write. That is a song Dolly Parton did not write. It's too bad. Be a great song. This is a departure from our normal podcast. Today is a departure day. Th- today is weird. Ben speaking is so baking, ADD today, guys, isn't he? It's insane. He's unmanageable. Baking, I had to take some cough syrup to get through yesterday's filming. And I was like, going to buy cough syrup. And then I, rem- I remembered seeing it in our medicine chest. I'm like, wait, I think I still have some. I remember it specifically getting Delsum because its only ingredient listed is just Cough suppressant. Yeah. No this, no that. It's alcohol free. Non, non-drowsy, alcohol free. It does not say crystal meth free on the bottle. I took this <laughs> 24 hours ago. Girl, I'm still feeling it. I Everyone I went remind to bed me to never night. do a show with Ben when he's on cough syrup. Never again. Because and it is seriously like he's four years old. Girl, you think you think it's bad now? I just can't wait to see. I filmed three episodes of the cooking show. It'll be hysterical. I have full-on laryngitis for all of them. I'm totally out of it. Apparently, according to my director, I seem like I'm just totally right there and with everyone. I feel in my head like I'm tripping on acid. Well, you seem very sharp to me right now. You're just like really wild. I'm sharp? Yeah, you seem sharp and on point. You just seem like you are wild. Yeah, going 800 miles an hour. You know, I don't have a falling asleep problem. I just have a going to bed problem. I know. It's true. When I close my eyes, usually it's followed by instant slumber. I hope that makes many people out there jealous. I hope that it does because that's all I have to hang on to in life. (laughs) Last night, when I closed my eyes, what I saw and heard... (laughs) Have you ever been to Vegas, Laura? Um, I have, have not. Have you ever been to Vegas? No. <laughs> or Atlantic City or a My. casino? Have you been to a casino? I've been to Atlantic City. Okay. You know how every tiny space, every speck is filled with as much stuff as possible, possible. times 300. I'm seeing clown faces. I'm seeing pinball machines i'm seeing comic books i think I'm maybe seeing, you shouldn't take this cough syrup again That's i'm thinking. seeing the yellow sub girl it was yellow submarine by the beatles when i close my and then i'll try to like use my meditation practice to let it fade out but it didn't fade to black into nothingness it just faded into the next acid trip like i could not i was like jogging in my sleep 
I was sleep jogging. Oh, and you would think after it's five years wild. of sobriety, it's like a free lapse. Like, yay, no one needs to know. No, after five years of just like when when being a stoner is what felt normal to me every day of my life, yeah. that's what felt comfortable. When being sober and having both feet on the ground and looking people in the eye and feeling present is what feels normal to you, mm -hmm. that's what feels comfortable. And any variation feels really out of, uh, uncomfortable. Well, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there is the end of my two minutes and 52 seconds of tangent. You know what? It's so fine. That, you know what? It's fine. Yeah. Because I actually think that um, this is fine. I think this yeah. is very entertaining. And um, it's also, we're very excited about Christine Quinn's defeat, everyone. We so, are. We you know, are. She's gone. This she is gone. the celebration of Christine Quinn's defeat episode. You know what so I So we're love? excited. You know what I love? I asked Donnie. I'm like, Donnie, does this mean that she's going to have to support Bill de Blasio? And he's like, well, duh. She's a Democrat. Well, so part of me is glad that we we were we actually um, we were supposed to record this earlier. I'm glad we didn't because we wouldn't have been able to do this like big blowout party. Oh, right. We were going to do this last week. Thank yeah. God. But you guys, the voice I would have had last week, if I could recreate the voice. This was, a, this was basically the I voice. I think everyone heard the, uh, the uh, field interview. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was worse than that. The field interview was recorded on a Wednesday. Oh we're talking Sunday. This was after working Lucky Chanks on Saturday night when the voice was starting to go. And then I had to talk over loud music for three seatings of, of, of guests. For like six hours, I'm yelling over Rihanna, Shine Bright Like a Diamond. I love that song. I hate that song. How? And I hate that you love the song. I like Rihanna. It's such an annoying song. It sounds like she's trying to use an annoying, like, shine bright like a diamond. Stop it. Okay, well, you don't have to like her. You have to not like her is the thing. You have to not like that song. You have to okay, not like I, that fine. song. Okay, fine. I hate that song. It's so Thank lame. You. Was that so hard? Was that so hard? Oh, my God. It's so gross. Thank you. You are a true friend. Now, how about Hotel California? I don't like that song. I like Thank the you. cover of it in Spanish in The Big Lebowski. Okay. Okay, good. Hotel Yazanitsky. <laughs> Such an awkward name. Such an awkward name. It's so hard to pronounce. It's not hard to pronounce. Yeah, Zanitsky. There you go. Deal with it. Yazanitsky. So I love that now Christine Quinn is going to have to back Bill de Blasio because that's as a Democrat, that's what she's going to have to do. The party will demand it of her. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it is pretty that, great. That is what we call, I'm not going to swear, but that's what we call a poop-eating grin. <laughs> I can't wait to hear her say good things about Bill de Blasio. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, it'll be exciting stuff. Okay. This is getting boring to some people in other parts of the country where this is not their drama. But look, y'all, look, this is a huge victory for the animals. Huge. She yeah, would have blocked just know animal that it was protection. An, an, an animal right activism played a huge role. That's why we're so huge. jacked up on it. Animal rights, not, uh, you know, we're so often, we're like a fringe movement. We're so marginalized. You never hear Obama at the inauguration speech talking about animal rights. Animal rights activists, because we wanted animal rights and we wanted them now, we had to get dirty. We had to play dirty and get involved in hard politics. And we just had, we just caused a shift and who's going to be the next Bloomberg? And we won. We won. Pat your... Pause. Pat yourself on the back. I don't care what you're doing right now. Pat. I will wait. Not all of you are doing it. There's a few holdouts. There we go. There we go. I'll take you it. I posted you about her. That. People asked me questions. Oh. And you know, every single time... It's kind of like when people approach you about veganism. And the... Um, not the 11th or the 12th, but the umpteenth time. You're like... Oh, just shut up already. Just, just get over it, you know? But every time someone asks you that question, that might be their first time reaching out to a vegan and wanting information. So you have to be fresh every time someone reaches out and wants to know why. Like, where do you get your protein, you know? It's an, it's an honest question, and it's their first time asking it. So we always have to be ready to be that happy, joyful vegan mm -hmm. and be that ambassador 
So in the same way, we had to constantly field all these questions about it and really answer these questions up to the 11th hour. So moving on, we're done with hisses and purrs. Let's talk about some food. Okay. Um, Girl, this episode. I was actually thinking we could skip the food and just go straight to questions. P.S. Terry has a pulled pork barbecue sandwich. They're working on the recipe. I had it. It was awesome. What are they making it out of? What's the pork out of? I don't know. I got to ask him, but they put coleslaw on it. They put coleslaw on it. It was really good. I don't like coleslaw. The girl's like, well, you could get it on that side. I'm like, good point. They're going to modify the recipe. They're still modifying it, which is why it's up in the air. So it's pointless to comment on it other than they're trying it out. P.S. I went to Home Depot afterwards to get some lights for my cooking show. And it killed time and went back to Terry to get my chicken Caesar wrap with extra chicken so I could eat it at home. And I got a butterfinger shake. Um, but they, they're going to put pickles on it and make the sauce less sweet. I suggested more smoky. So they're working on it. But... Just go to Terry and, and, and just gloss over your eats You know, as if well. you're in New York City, go to Terry. If you're in New York City. <laughs> and if you're not, demand they branch out globally. Branch out. Actually, it would be great if they did. So let's They're just so get good. to some questions because we have some, we got some really great Woo-hoo! questions on Twitter. Yeah. So tell them how they can contact us because they're sick of this voice by now. Lord, I know I am. Girl. All right. So everyone, you know that uh, we love to answer questions, so please uh, be free to send them to us. And there are, are no bad questions, um, and it can Only be about anything. Only stupid questions. Yeah. Uh, I, they can be about anything. So anything. all the ways to contact us are listed at BigFatVeganRadio.com, but you can call us at 315-VEGAN-01. That's 315-834-2601. And just leave us a voicemail, and you'll hear yourself on the show. You can email us at bigfatveganradio at gmail.com. You can tweet at us. It's at bigfatvegans. You can also tweet at me at Lara Yaz, and you can tweet at Ben at Honey LeBronx. You can YouTube us at youtube.com slash bigfatveganradio, and you can Facebook us by searching for Big Fat Vegan Radio on Facebook. Wow. I was bored listening to all that. Are our listeners bored listening to all that? Your attitude today. I'm just kidding. I'm being sassy. Dude, seriously, reach out and check us out. That's that's how you can find us. Um, it's so, so funny, we, though. I feel like whenever you're annoyed and bored with the episode, it's how I feel most of the time. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> wait, that was a good joke at my expense, but I didn't get it. Damn, I'm never smart enough to know when I'm being insulted, and it's always so funny, and I wish I was in on the joke. No, I don't always feel that way. I mean, I've had those days, though, where I'm like, oh, my God, I, I'm... I'm just going to say on record, I'm aware that I'm a pretty annoying personality. I don't feel like there's a whole lot I can do about it. And so I have to just embrace it. And I just accept when people tune me out because you got to tune me out sooner or later. You're hysterical. I'm kind of like a fuel cell, basically. I'm not a battery that dies out. I'm just a fuel cell. And I'm just going to burn until I'm dead one day. And that day will be when I turn 136 years old. Um, but yeah, I love that we got some questions f- at Twitter, um, cause that's nice. really the best, best, best way to reach us because it's reaching us in a very public forum. So, mm-hmm. um, can I take our first tweet? Please read it. Because it's from a medieval oil client of mine. And a Hello, big fat Sarah member. Ellis. And she's gorgeous. She, not only is she gorgeous, but she's got a hot boy. Sarah Ellis, you got a hot boyfriend. Okay. Oh. So when Look he's out. ready to switch teams, send him on down to America, Canada's shorts. And, um, and uh, when he's ready to go um, drag queen, send him over to Honey. So Sarah Ellis at pin a cup, P-I-N-A-C-U-P, like you're going to pin a cup on a donkey. She quote, um, when you two went vegan, what sort of changes did your body go through, good and bad? Did they stay or go away? Huh. I kind of don't remember. Really? Yeah. Do you have anything that was noticeable? Well, I'm going to say that I was trying to pay attention to it because mm-hmm. I thought something might happen. Yeah. And I d- and nothing super noticeable happened to me other than, I don't know, I sort of felt like maybe I would lose some weight mm-hmm. and I did not. Yep. But I do feel like my body changed. Like I feel like I lost some bloat. And I feel like also some bloat moved 
if that mm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. used to sort of carry my gas a little higher than I do now. Interesting. I thought if that sounds weird, I, I don't know how else to explain it. But I do feel like there was sort of a shift in where basically my tummy gets big when I eat a lot of food. Interesting. Yeah. I was trying to picture that and then I promptly stopped trying to picture yeah, it. Yeah, don't try to picture it. So yeah. anyway, I'm not totally sure. I do feel like – um the, I feel like, you know, digesting food sort of changed for me. The main thing I, it happens to me is that I used to go, you know, I'm a big, I like to eat out with all my friends, order way too much food. It's like the thing I really like to do. And I used to do it when I was an omnivore as well as after I was vegan. And when I used to do it, it was, I'd be like in a coma afterwards. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I would be so full, it would be painful. Yeah. Like, Ugh, this horrible even, feeling. Even vegan food comas don't really last that they're long. Not the they're just not the same. So it's painful. just not the same because I remember yeah. a friend's birthday and we went to Romans in Brooklyn, which by the way, everyone is a fabulous restaurant. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, And they're not a vegan place, but they do a different – they only do like a couple menu items. Every night there's no menu. You know what I mean? It's like this – it's a place oh, with yeah, no yeah. name, no sign. You know what I mean? It's like a secret restaurant in Brooklyn and it's very fancy, whatever. How but very Brooklyn. It's great. So I went there – so, you know, my friend who wanted to have her birthday there called and said one of my friends is vegan. And they were like, no problem. We'll have a vegetarian option that we can easily make vegan for her. So when Mm -hmm. I came in, I was like, I'm the vegan. And she was like, oh, great. Well, if you just do this vegetarian pasta, we'll just leave the cheese off. And it was fabulous. And it was huge. I ate a ton. Also, I had like bruschetta, which I ate a ton of. And then I had pasta. And then I had chocolate sorbet, dark chocolate salted sorbet for dessert. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ate a ton. And I was totally full, but I felt great. I mean, it was full. I had a huge meal. I felt great. But my friends who were a couple, they had like a pasta with meat in it and a steak. They also had an appetizer and dessert. They were like sick. Yeah. Like they had eaten yeah. so much they were sick. And I remember seeing them and thinking, I remember that feeling. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. I never have it anymore. I you never four, have that. Gotta, like, oh, I'm going to die. You undo your belt, sit back. And part of it, I think, is that I remember reading in a book once about – um your digestive fluids and which one digests mm-hmm. what and actually eating meat sort of like neutralizes the chemicals in your stomach to break down food so they stop so it's like you're it's just sitting in your stomach your your body's not actually breaking it down mm-hmm. whereas with vegan food because you're not taking in any animal protein that it doesn't your your fluids keep going so your body's continually digesting while you yeah. eat which is much better for you which is probably the reason you don't get that like crazy full feeling well, and if you also – well, also, you don't get the crazy full feeling because um, – uh, how do you say this? Um, animal foods are a lot more c- calorie dense. True. So it takes a lot more of it to fill up your stomach, whereas vegan foods, you'll feel full on fewer calories well, faster. Well, it's just heavier food. It's heavier food. And then it, and then it clears out of your stomach faster. You yeah, know? I remember actually Chloe Coscarelli at her book signing, her mom goes with her to all her book signings. And her oh. mom, she's so awesome. Her mom was I would chatting be like, with her. Mom, it's my book signing. Get out of here. No, she loves her. She, I mean, they have a great relationship. I would, be, I would be so excited if my mom followed me around too. Go ahead. So her mom is chatting with people in line. Some are vegan, some aren't. You know, Chloe has a really big audience. And so some, and she was saying to them, she was like, well, you know, I just think there's something about once that you go vegan, it's just, it's not that you can't still have rich food. It's just that it's lighter enough that you can still taste everything and you just don't yeah. feel weighed down afterwards. And I just think it's totally right on. So I think that yeah. you're, my di- I think I felt a digestive change. I didn't know, I didn't lose any weight. I don't feel like my skin really changed. Um, I don't feel like anything changed with my hair or my nails or anything like that. I mean, I've heard people say that. None of those things happened to me. I mean, I mean, people say that like they never get sick anymore. I was taking care of the twins the first year of their life. Like af- shortly after I went vegan, I started taking care of the twins. Mm-hmm. And even when you take care of kids, you get catch colds all the time from them. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't say that I think my – I mean, if anything, I was sick more because I was working with kids. But, <laughs> you know, that's so that's yeah. it for me. I don't know. That's it for you? Yeah. I just have to say a footnote here. <clears throat> Whenever you talk about the twins, mm-hmm. every now and then – I just kind of think about your boobs. Every now and then I just think that that's what you're talking about. Oh, because they could be my twins. Yeah, like the girls, my twins. Anyway, so. I've never called them that. I always call them You never called them the twins? Okay, my breasts. Um, I would call them my breathlessness if I had them. 
Um, you know what I forgot? I didn't even think that I had a body change that I went through. And I really don't feel like I went through anything. When people, when I say I'm vegan, people are like, oh, you must feel amazing. I'm like, you know what I do feel? I know. A feather light conscience. Yes. When amen. Put my amen. Hand on That's the truth right there. I feel Preach. spiritually lighter. And I know that sounds so hippy dippy. But it's so but true. I, I really mean it. Like I just feel a lot of weight off my You know it, where that's I lost the most weight? magical thing. You that know happens. where I lost weight? I lost a hundred pounds when I went vegan in my shoulders. Yes, it's pounds, true. Fifty pounds off each shoulder. It feels like a I, heavy curtain was removed yeah. from my head. Yeah. Like when I see animals, I feel so at peace now. Like I get yeah. them. It's liberating. You know? Like when I, when, like just the thought that when I go, like I used to be really annoyed by my mom's dog because my mom's dog would try to wake me up when I would sleep in late by like jumping in bed and like biting at my toes. Cause dogs are smart and dogs must know any sleeping body does not want their toes bit. <laughs> and I would like kick at the dog, like get out of here. If you don't want to get kicked, then don't bite my toes. Damn it. When I'm sleeping. Well, now I can't wait to go home because I'm like, ooh, my mom has a dog. And when I go home, I can convene with Maxwell, you know? Like, it's so yeah. holy. It's so spiritual to me now, getting to spend time with any kind of animal. But Sarah Ellis, who, by the way, she and her boyfriend look like Abercrombie and Fitch models. They just do. Look at their Facebook page. Stalk them a little because they look like A&F models. They just do. <laughs> but... um. She asked what changes my body went through, and I forgot to mention, girl, do you like to poop? Do you like pooping? I do. Who likes to poop? If you like to poop, go vegan. When I was not vegan, I would sometimes poop once a day, sometimes once every day and a half. There were days where it didn't happen. Remember that? There used to be days where today was not a pooping day. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, forget that. You're vegan. You're going to poop once a day maybe twice a day. There are times where I poop three times a day. Or get this, Laura. Have you ever had this where you poop, you're done, you go on with your life, get back to your laptop. All right, where was I? Oh, God. And you have to go back in because apparently I wasn't done pooping. Yeah, it is kind of a thing, you guys. My, they are bigger. They are longer, both in time and in length. They are just... Sometimes, okay, I'm as... Who wants TMI? Who wants TMI? I, I'm raising my hand. I'm not no, raising Laura, my you're, hand. You're not raising yours. Listeners, no one's, no one's, no one's raising theirs. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell this. Our toilet bowl clogs very easily. We have a four sheet count. Count them. One, two, three, four sheets of toilet paper and it will clog the bowl. I have lately been clogging the bowl without toilet paper. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Oh, Yeah. Clogging it without toilet paper. That is what happened. And people think like eating meat is so manly. Like, yeah, I poop. Okay, I am officially embarrassed now. I'm done. Well, yeah, I mean, girl, I know it's true. We love pooping. And if you want to poop more, go vegan. I mean, I think it's, um, I'm actually Your not totally output. sure the comedian's name, so I'm not going to say it. But I know there's a comedian who's vegan who does a bit where he says, uh, so I what's cool him. about being vegan is that I just pee and poop at the same rate now. Yes. That's brilliant. I mean, it's true, That's guys. Brilliant. Yeah. Poo poo pachu. If you want to be productive, your output will increase threefold. Threefold. So that was our tweet from Sarah Ellis. Sarah, th thank you. Thank you for that. And I uh, want to take the next one. This is from Samuel L. Jackson's daughter. <laughs> is she Samuel L. Jackson's daughter? It could be. I mean, nothing is certain. You it's know? true. So this is from Heidi Jackson who is on Twitter, at Jackson Heidi W. She says, would like to know if I really need to take supplements, and if so, what types and how much? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll start this one first since I let you start the last one. Sure. I would say I don't really, and that's kind of dishonest because now at this point in my life, I do take a multivitamin, mm -hmm. and I do sometimes when I can remember to, which is once every other week, I take a B12 supplement, which I never remember to do. Mm -hmm. And I had my B12 levels recently checked by my doctor. And he's like, your B12 is excellent. It's off the charts. You have all the B12 you need. And I'm like, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Apparently, you can have B12 levels high in your blood, but it doesn't mean your body's absorbing them. And he's like, Ben, if you weren't absorbing your B12, 
then other things would be low on your on your test and they're mm. not you're doing fine now i'm not a doctor that's not medical advice some people maybe you do need to take a b12 um supplement you I don't do know. i'm just gonna say that but i don't really take a supplement and i seem to be doing okay i'm kind of junk foody processedy and so far, so good at four years vegan, almost four years vegan. Yeah, um, well, the, I the, the main now thing, the main thing there that health. I just want to interject and say is that yeah. everybody's different. So that's the thing is that some yeah. people don't need to take supplements and they are relatively okay. Here's where listen to your body comes into play. Not in like the whole I need to eat meat thing, but like if you're happy and you know it, take your supplements. Well, all right. So I have something to say. Okay. Um, which is basically that um, the two things that you need to supplement, from what I understand, um, and if you want more information, I recommend checking out Dr. Furman's website. It's just drfurman.com and uh, Ginny Messina's site. Uh, she's the vegan RD. So is it RD? Yeah, I think RD. Anyway. Yes, RD. Yeah. Anyway, they're both great. And Ginny really openly always recommends that if you're going to go vegan, you supplement your B12 and your iodine. She says that over and over mm. again, because those are the main things that make people sick when they go vegan and they don't supplement. Because mm. that's the primary thing that you'll, that you will possibly miss. Now, the thing about B12 that I've apparently heard is that um, if you are having a problem with B12, a lot of times it's actually not, if you're supplementing or, or not, it has to do with absorption. So you may need to do some type of cleanse. It has to do with your bowel and your um, intestines and stuff like that. So anyway, if you are having a B12 problem, you might want to look into um, other um, things to do other than supplementing because a lot of it's an absorption problem. But that's neither here or there. So uh, I just want to read this. Um, this is from Dr. Furman's website. He says, some people, even when consuming an ideal diet, may need more of certain nutrients. Individual absorption and utilization of nutrients varies from person to person, and some people simply require more to maximize their health. For example, some individuals require more vitamin D or B12 due to differences in absorption and utilization, and likewise, some may also require more minerals such as zinc for maximizing health and longevity. By taking one of Dr. Furman's multivitamin and mineral supplements along with an excellent diet, um, longevity and protection against disease is even more enhanced. So, I mean, obviously I use Dr. Furman supplements and, and in his just daily multivitamin, uh, there's a B12 and iodine. However, you can also use iodized salt if you salt your food. That's a way to get it in your food. Um, so I, those are just because Ginny's always harping on that. I mean, I always remember that when people ask me if they're going to go vegan, is there something they need to do? I say just those are to the two supplements that you really need to make sure you have and you can get them both in one vegan friendly multivitamin from Dr. Furman. And I'm sure you could even find mm -hmm. one just at a vitamin store that would contain both as well. Yeah. You don't even need to get Dr. Furman supplements, although I'm quite a fan of his stuff. So yeah. uh, that's my, that's my answer. Yeah. You know, I actually forgot to mention uh, that when I did get my vitamin levels checked, apparently my vitamin D was low. Oh, so I started supplementing. Sun. Well, I, yeah, I, that's, that's for darn sure. I, I, you know, I've sit in this, in this room all summer long. I hardly ever see the sun. Um, but so I looked up online, I found a vitamin, I, I looked up all the different kinds of vitamin D there are. There's a vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. I don't know what happened to one. I guess it, they got rid of it. Um, so I ordered two vegan supplements and I started supplementing with those. But a doctor friend of mine said, Ben, everyone is vitamin D deficient and it doesn't do anything. And if you take vitamin D, it doesn't necessarily make you not vitamin D deficient. Your so friend who's a doctor said this? Yes. So he's like, okay. so don't sweat it. He's like, he like shrugged it off. He's like, meh, everyone's got that. Don't, don't freak out over it. Well, the main basically. thing I've heard for vitamin D is you just need to get out in the sun 10, 15 minutes yeah. a day. Yeah. Which I so definitely that. am doing. Oh, I don't nearly enough, nearly enough. So, so thank you for those questions. So Heidi Such Jackson. Such awesome questions. Thank you guys. And Sarah Ellis, you are making us hiss. What? I just always love, I just always love saying that don't listen do. to him you guys <laughs> we love you guys thanks for the questions so that i think just about does it uh-huh sorry i'm it's the kids music i'm totally you can still hear it, it right wall. now that I is it that's it that's it for our show everyone yeah that's all we got yeah, yeah, for yeah, big yeah, fat vegan radio so uh new episodes of vegan drag queen coming soon coming so soon exciting. coming soon girl and i finally 
I finally put up an like, episode of three minutes about a movie, y'all. Wait, did I see it? Which one was it? Kick Ass Two. <gasps> I didn't see it. I want right, to watch well, it. Check I want to see that one. Um, I'm enjoying your three minutes, and, 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 and instead of actually seeing the movie. I feel like I don't need to see the movie. No, that's nice of you to say. I actually have some other friends who say the same thing. They're like, I don't even see the movie. I just like your review. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Such I just a like great the compliment. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, also, as always, you guys can always become members. If you go to bigfatbeaconradio.com, just click on support us. Oh, There's also, I want to say, just because yeah, yeah. people have been canceling their membership and then writing us really sad emails... Oh, that we love guys. you and please don't feel bad. We're so grateful for any support you can give us at any time. And you're so sweet and we love you. The fact that you were with us this long, yeah. like, that just tell, it just means it means so much to us. If you ever donate, off, it's so wonderful. Like you there's no I'm never I'm never mad. It's not even just the money. Like I value my time so much. Yeah. You had to stop actively listening. And go to your computer. My credit card is never in a convenient place. You had to like whip out your card, yeah. <laughs> look at those numbers, punch it in, go through some kind of verification Rigamarole. thing. And be like, I, I am typing in the word check thing correctly. God, like, right. You had to go through some steps just to support us and I, and just to unsupport us. So that's, it's awesome that you even thought to do it. So yeah. if you even, you don't even have to write to apologize. We love that you supported us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And you can always support us just by, by listening, just by being a listener and by talking about us. Sharing an episode. Sharing our episode. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So thank you for that. You can also follow us uh, as individuals on the Twitter and the Instagram. I'm Honey LeBronx. Laura is at Laura Yaz on both platforms. Um, you can check out her YouTube channel and mine. Um, and you can always buy some of my famous, world famous medieval oil at medievaloil.com. Um, I'm kind of out of uses at this point, frankly. Just go to MedievalOil.com and I'll have a list of uses there on the website. So, Laura, do you want to tell us about our musical guest? Yeah. So tonight we're featuring um, Paulina Logan and uh, she's a wonderful vegan singer-songwriter. And this is her song, Listen. We're actually playing the Omen Room remix because we really like it. Because it's got a nice beat and you can kind of jam to it. Get your glow sticks ready. (laughs) <laughs> so as always, we want to give a big, generous shout out to our friends. If they aren't too famous for us at this point, the Seriously. Michael Heron just back off the road from touring with Sandra Bernhardt. Uh, you can check out his work at michaelheron.com. And as always, Kelly Huffine, uh, she is at kelly42fox.deviantart.com. Uh, and a special thanks as always to our official sponsor. If you like this podcast, thank her because she's bringing it to you. My good friend, Miss Sunshine Villa. We love you, Sunshine. Woo! And I probably didn't mention why we're thanking Michael and Kelly. Michael for our theme song, Kelly for our cartoons and logo. I think you said that. We usually do. I didn't this time. Oh, anyway. All right. So also we want to announce our raffle winners from the fundraiser. Uh, so the winner of the OCD gift basket is... Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Stephanie Go Hendricks. Congratulations, Stephanie. You will be receiving caramels. Um, you Yum. can send me the thing. Oh, card. we already... Basically, what, what she's getting, we already kind of got. They yeah, they sent us some candy, too. Obsessive Sorry compulsive. not to brag. Uh, uh, obs- obsessive confection disorder. They they also sent us a little something something on the side. They <sighs> didn't last me more than thirty six hours. Me and some golden girls. That's long. Snarfed those down. It was Mine good. didn't make it through the evening. Oh my god, so good. so good. You're gonna love it. Yeah. All right. Next, Brrr. the winner of Main Street Vegan by Victoria Moran. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go grab a Zevia soda while you're still waiting for it. Wendy Edwards. Yay! Congratulations, Wendy. You will be, you have won a copy of one of my favorite vegan books. Awesome. Definitely. Right Enjoy. My head. All and right, last, and but last certainly but not certainly least. Certainly not least. The winner of the Sexy Vegan Happy Hour at Home cookbook is. Wait for it. 
Drum roll, please. For it. Oh my God, how long do we have to wait for it? I need a drum roll, please. Dun, 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 Joan Haygood. Give it up for Joan, everybody. Joan. Woo. You're really going to enjoy that cookbook, Joan, because I guys, love it. Joan, you better go ahead and get a little tipsy on that book, too, since me and Laura can't. There are some fine cocktail recipes in well, that book. Until the next time I have a cough again and have to get high for 36 hours on cough syrup. God, no kidding. I'm not condoning it. This isn't This isn't uh, the, 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 the hacker's, uh, what is it called? The handbook? The... Uh, this isn't the anarchist cookbook over here. I'm not telling you what to go out there and do. Is that a thing? The anarchist cookbook? The anarchist cookbook. It's like how to make homemade bombs and weird stuff. And I've just, that's now, someone's Googling it now. That sounds awful. Don't yeah, Google kaboom. it. Don't Google that. Don't, you guys, no we bombs. Are, we're here to tell you what you can and cannot Google. No bombs. Don't Google that. Please, Don't everyone. Google that. All right. Yeah. Well, everyone, so, that's all we got today for Big Fat Vegan Radio. Thanks so much for tuning in and please subscribe to us through iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. And it'd be extra helpful if you could leave us an awesome rating and a glowing review. Yep. And be sure to let us know what you thought about this episode on our Facebook page. You can also send us a tweet, leave us a voicemail, or you can leave us a comment uh, at bigfatveganradio.com or in the comments on YouTube. We would love to hear from you guys. So Laura, Thank you for putting up with me episode after episode oh. after episode. Well, likewise, I know I can be really mean. You can be mean, but I, I, you, you're dealing with a lot. You have to deal with me <laughs> and toddlers. <laughs> it's true. It's I like have a you, headache. It's like you, you nanny three little kids. <laughs> so, um, well, thank you, Ben. Did we? Hang on, I gotta scroll back up in the in the script. We, we mentioned the raffle winners, right? Yes. We mentioned the raffle winners. I gotta hate it when you double back. I'm just. I just want to make sure there's a special event. We got our segment. We skipped over big. Oh no! You food. know what we forgot? I know what yeah. we forgot. Yeah. Uh huh. Go, Go vegan! vegan! <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 It's we're not losing him. Funny. It's not funny.
We Sorry. should do a whole episode that's just a bonus show. Oh my god! We well, I think we've it, got one right now. We should we just have call a it, whole episode that's just a bonus show right now. We should just call it the shit show. The shit show. That's called. Let's call this that. Welcome to the shit show. I'm Ben. She's Laura. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. This is it. How to tantrum? <laughs> this. This is it. Kids are screaming. Poor you know, thing. Top, they're to- growing their molars. Off. Those twins. So they're just like in. Like their back of their mouths are all swollen. Oh, it must be that's, torture. That's gotta hurt. I you know. You have nothing to compare it to. You have no idea. Like, why is my head exploding? I know. Well, also they don't. You know, you can't tell them. Like, I'm so sorry. You're just having pain. And sometimes you try to give them stuff. Like, you know, that to, should make it feel better. And if they don't know yeah. that it's gonna work, they're just upset that you're like putting stuff in their face. So, yeah. You know, they want you to go to the wall, point to a light switch, flip it, and now the pain's gone. They have like these ice things that they'll chew on so they know that those help but yeah i feel so bad i oh. felt their mouth the other day because i was like do they have teeth back there is that what this is and it was like all puffy yeah hey you know what we went through it we got through it okay yeah i don't even remember it actually we came out all right i don't recall any of it so i guess it was yeah. fine i remember i lost my first tooth it was wiggly and then one day i decided biting into an apple was a good idea <gasps> Oh, I'm so traumatized from having lost my teeth as a child. Yeah. I don't know why. Really? Oh, I hated it. I hated it so much. Can we get this show on the road? Oh, my God. Come on. Yeah, you've just just horrified me by making me think about my teeth falling out. And then my Cabbage Patch doll, his name was Vaughn Cliff. His head fell off. I was carrying him over my shoulder holding his head like you would a baby because he was a preemie. The Cabbage Patch Kid dolls, they made a series of them that were preemies. Now, I just thought pre I thought preemie was just a cute name for a kid. No, preemie means premature birth. So they made premature birth Cabbage Patch Kid dolls. This was my first one that I had. And uh, his name was Vaughn Cliff. And I'm carrying him like this into the backyard and his head fell off. And I was... And my dad comes like, running, like, what is it? And I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I'm six. I couldn't talk. I too would be traumatized by such and a thing. And my dad put his head back on with a, uh, like, a, like one of those, like, um, tie cable things that, like, the police cuff your hands with when you block traffic for equality. Uh, the zip ties? Zip ties, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My dad zip tied his When head you back block on. traffic for equality. <laughs> Yeah. Or if you sit in a park for two days. Sit in a park for two days. Zuccotti. Oh, okay. Did All you those sit guys. in a park for Zuccotti? No, I didn't, but everybody uh, got arrested yeah. for doing oh, I'm nothing. Listing, I'm listing my resume. I'm talking uh, about the things that I did. Oh, I know I you did. are. Oh, I With know. my life. I know. All right, you ready? I am so ready. So, you want to start this off? Mm-hmm. Well, I think I have to. All right. <laughs> 